So lately, for whatever reason, billionaire Elon Musk is trying to troll the left. He's been going at it with the lefties for quite some time now. And um, he isn't really making anyone genuinely mad, but what he is doing in the process of trying to trigger the left is making himself look like an out-of-touch dumbass, and this has led to some genuinely embarrassing moments where, um, if I were him, I would stop. So, for example, he tweeted out what a lot of people received to be a veiled swipe at trans people, which led to him being scolded by his own girlfriend. So he tweeted out, pronouns suck, and then Grimes responded saying, I love you, but please turn off your phone or give me a call. I cannot support hate. Please stop this. I know this isn't your heart. Now, she later deleted the tweet, uh, but that's still really embarrassing. Like, to be publicly scolded by your significant other... That is deeply, deeply embarrassing, and I actually didn't initially take that as a swipe at trans people, because when you say pronouns suck, you can interpret that as some sort of, like, uh, I don't, I don't know, postmodern version of, like, oh, well, we should all just transcend pronouns and just refer to everyone with gender-neutral pronouns, so I didn't view it as, you know, transphobic initially, like, not knowing where he was coming from, but the person who knows him the best took it as transphobic. So that's telling. Now, on top of that, uh, his latest thing is he uh, decided to take a shot at Marx to trigger lefties, uh, tweeting out a boomer meme he stole from another Twitter user, where Marx is apparently quoted saying, give me that for free, and he's called Hungry Santa. <laughs> okay. Yes, because we all know that the premise of Marx is on capital was that workers were the ones who were taking something that they didn't rightfully earn. But he's just trolling, guys. He's he's the biggest troll ever. He's so funny. Uh, but he himself, as many pointed out on Twitter, has been the recipient of a handout from the government. So if anyone likes free things, it is billionaire Elon Musk. But I mean, sometimes he'll troll. Other times he'll try to be a little bit more serious, a little bit more deeper. But then he'll go back to trolling. So, for example, he got in trouble uh, with one particular tweet that he put out where he says, Another government stimulus package is not in the best interests of the people, in my opinion. Now, in saying this, I think he got a little bit more than he bargained for because he ended up going full mask off because somebody rightfully pointed out, you know what wasn't in the best interest of the people? The U.S. government organizing a coup against Evo Morales in Bolivia so you could obtain the lithium there. To which Elon Musk responded saying, we will coup whoever we want, deal with it. Oh, Elon. <laughs> That big troll, he's so funny. The United States government would never do a regime change in Latin America for the purposes of getting their natural resources. I mean, come on. Now, what's interesting to me is even if, you know, it seems as if he's trying to troll and get a response out of the left, that's one thing. Like, to joke about regime change, sure, you're trolling, you're memeing a little bit too close to the sun, and you're going to get burned. But what's a little bit telling is that there is actually a reason to believe that his company specifically did benefit from the coup in Bolivia. Because as Glenn Greenwald points out, when I interviewed Evo Morales in Mexico City last December, the month after he was forced under threats to leave Bolivia, he was very clear that he regarded what happened as what he called a lithium coup. It's good Elon Musk is admitting this, and he explains how Morales labels the military overthrow of Bolivian democracy a lithium coup and explains why. Now listen very carefully to what Evo Morales says. Bajo la licitación pública internacional, ni una empresa norteamericana se adjudica. Claro, ellos están siempre con la mentalidad de competitividad y además de eso, ellos están con una mentalidad de, de privatizadora. Y no esa política, no, el Estado va a industrializar, ya puede haber socios, pero fundamentalmente que presten servicio. En tema de teníamos propuesta 41 plantas. La mayoría de industria de industria de litio, por ejemplo, hidróxido de litio, carbonato de litio, cloruro de potasio, estaba la planta de batería, ¿no? los otros para insumos y los otros para subproductos, subproductos para medicamentos y para alimentos. Yo no soy experto, pero obligo de entender, debatiendo con los técnicos, con ministros, viceministros, gerentes del tema de litio. Ya hemos empezado, el año pasado entregamos, inauguramos una planta, como hace un momento comentaba, de cloruro de potasio, estamos exportando. Estamos exportando litio, pero de la planta pilota, el próximo año vamos a inaugurar la planta de la industria de carbonato de litio. Entonces yo siento que, que ese, 
ese sector energético tan importante que desde Bolivia, inclusive teníamos la oportunidad de poner el precio de litio para todo el mundo, pero con participación, Europa, China, Asia, y esté fuera de Estados Unidos, eso no soporta. Que un indio maneje eso, y como Estado además de eso. Entonces yo sigo convencido, este es un golpe de Estado al litio. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, this isn't confirmation that, you know, Elon Musk helped orchestrate this Bolivian coup with the U.S. government. It's not even evidence that he was complicit in said coup. But is there a reason to believe that he is benefiting from this coup? Well, yes. In fact, Glenn followed up saying, For the weird hordes of loyal Musk fans claiming his tweet was only trolling, the right-wing coup government is trying to make their lithium far more available to U.S. interests, including Tesla. Here's a key figure in the coup regime to Bolsonaro. And as you can see, there is a Bolivian official who came to power after Evo Morales was ousted, tweeting to the Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, about his plans to meet with Elon Musk in Brazil and to propose another factory for Tesla's lithium batteries. Gotcha, 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 bitch. Now, again, to be clear, I'm not accusing Elon Musk of conspiring with the U.S. government or any international entity to overthrow the Bolivian government for purposes of getting their lithium, right? I'm not accusing him of that. But what I am saying is that if we have really good reason to believe that your company specifically will monetarily benefit by the ousting of a democratically elected leader in a country, then maybe you might not want to troll about that particular subject. Maybe it's a bad look for you and your company to actually joke about that. When we have good reason to believe that you will be benefiting from Evo Morales getting thrown out by a far-right fascist regime. Now, uh, going back to his tweet about the stimulus package, you know, that in and of itself, it irritated a lot of people because he's not very clear, but a couple of minutes after making that initial tweet, he did follow up saying, as a reminder, I'm in favor of universal basic income. Goal of government should be to maximize the happiness of the people. Giving each person money allows them to decide what meets their needs rather than the blunt tool of legislation, which creates self-serving special interests. Now, on one hand, I see the point that he's trying to make. Like, I understand and I agree that the CARES Act was problematic because even if it gave people a one-time payment of $1,200. That wasn't enough. Like, I think we should be getting $2,000 per month throughout the duration of this pandemic. But I get that, like, special interests, they disproportionately benefited from this. So in crafting another stimulus package, sure, that could be a Trojan horse to give more welfare away to large multinational corporations. Having said that, though, he needs to be a little bit more specific. Are you saying that, you know, um, rather than doing a stimulus package, we should just do UBI because then if we're going to steel man him, that would that would make more sense. Right. But that's not necessarily what he's saying. And he's missing that a stimulus might not necessarily just mean direct cash payments. It could also mean uh, strengthening our social safety net when it comes to unemployment insurance, uh, food stamps, because people need more than just money right now. They need food, right? The money that they're getting is going to be used for bills and their rent, but they also need food. So, I mean, it's more than that. But if he's saying that we have to find a way to deliver the goods to people and maximize happiness, as he puts it, without letting large corporations make out like bandits, then I would agree with him, which is why I ask him why he is a recipient of corporate welfare himself. If you are against special interests getting money from the government, why do you take money from the government? And Bernie Sanders put it best. What a hypocrite. Elon Musk has received billions in corporate welfare from U.S. taxpayers. Now he wants to stop 30 million Americans who lost jobs from receiving $600 a week in unemployment benefits, while his wealth has gone up by $46.7 billion over the past four months pathetic. And that's exactly right. And his supposed opposition, his fake opposition to large corporations, multi-billion dollar companies receiving money from the government, it is incredibly hypocritical, so much so that even Fox Business News, who licks the boots of billionaires like Elon Musk, pointed out the hypocrisy and that his companies has received a ton of money from the government. We're talking billions of dollars from the government.
So we dug through the numbers and our brain room came up with Tesla saying that uh, it looks like Musk's electric car company, Tesla, has received total subsidies of $2.4 billion in federal, state and local grants, as well as nearly half a billion dollars when it comes to federal loans. Now, as for SpaceX, which is Musk's private space venture, only $5 million in subsidies, but close to $5 billion when it comes to funding from NASA in contracts and research and development. And there could be even more as SpaceX and Elon Musk's satellite venture Starlink, which provides internet and broadband services for rural areas, is also looking to compete for $16 billion in government broadband subsidies. And we know that Tesla's 300% rally this year, yes, has made Musk a very rich man. In fact, the fifth richest on the planet. So in other words, stimulus for me, but not for thee. It's okay if my company gets money from the government, but the peasants, they don't deserve that money. Now, look, let's assume for a moment that he's speaking out in good faith and he genuinely doesn't think a stimulus is going to make Americans better off. He thinks that, you know, a UBI, a permanent UBI that stacks on top of our existing social safety net programs, a progressive implementation of UBI that, you know, goes along with social security and food stamps and whatnot is his solution. If that's what he's arguing, then that's fine. But he's not very clear. And the problem with people like Elon Musk, billionaire capitalists like Elon Musk, is that he's already showed his cards. He doesn't care about maximizing the happiness of people. He is all about maximizing his own wealth. His company literally defied a lockdown order and sued a county in California. Also, he could force his workers back to work at a Tesla factory during a pandemic. So he kind of already revealed what it is that he wants. He wants to take the Trump approach and just pretend like this pandemic isn't actually a thing. And let's all just get back to normal, send everyone back to work. Because if we even admit that a stimulus package is needed, then that accepts that a prolonged shutdown is a necessary thing. And that's not good for billionaire capitalists, because so long as people need a stimulus, they're just going to be getting enough money to get by, right? They're not going to have extra money to buy the things that capitalists like Elon Musk sell. So for capitalists, pretending like COVID-19 isn't a thing, in their minds is exactly what they want. It's all about money, although I shouldn't even say that because that wouldn't make sense because he's doing really well during the pandemic. The point is, he doesn't really know what he's talking about, these vague posts about policy where he's half serious and then goes back to trolling. I mean, I don't get what he's trying to do, but I think what it does prove beyond a shadow of a doubt is that if there's anyone who we don't need the input of when it comes to public policy, it's billionaires. It's capitalist elites like Elon Musk, the fifth richest person in the world. Because if we listen only to people like him, then, well, actually, we don't even have to speculate. We know exactly what's going to happen because our government has been captured by special interests. I mean, a 2014 Princeton University study by Drs. Gillings and Page found that when you look at policy outcomes, the American people, just normal people like you and I, we have a statistically insignificant impact on policy outcomes. Whereas billionaires, special interests, corporations, they have all the say when it comes to policy outcomes. So, you know... Forgive me, but I don't care what you have to say about policy, Elon Musk. Continue to troll. But what we're actually seeing is uh, him being butthurt. You see, the left is on to him, and the left calls him out for his greed, right? So he doesn't like that, so he's trying to, you know poke the left a little bit. Uh, but what he's not realizing is that by quote unquote trolling the left, you're not actually proving a point. You're not convincing any leftists. You're just proving their point for them. And on top of that, you're making yourself look like a dumbass by tweeting so much that your girlfriend has to tell you to call her and get off of Twitter. I mean, how embarrassing. It certainly proves that, you know, uh, wealth doesn't mean that you're automatically going to be intelligent. Just because he's a billionaire doesn't mean he's smart. I think that his Twitter activity is proving that every single day. Congratulations, you played yourself.